if you could go back, knowing all the information that you learned, all the, the wisdom, the knowledge that you learned, just from that experience being with Boosie standing in his house, right? What's what would you choose if you, if if somebody came to you before before you even stayed there, before you dropped the movie, before everything, but you knew that you would learn what you know now. Like I would give you all this knowledge, all this wisdom, right? This movie, sixty five bands, all that. I would give you all this and knowledge, or you could take this two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash. Which one are you taking? Oh, immediately I'm gonna take the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way, you know. Like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. Come on, man. Just gonna go with the motion, man. You sure? Go with the motion. Let's get it popping. What's good, man? You already know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We are in the building. Yes, sir, Ski. Shout out to the Pro Creatives. Uh, if you need a podcast studio to record out of, make sure you holler at my guy, Joe, at the Pro Creatives, man. Get your studio right. Also, this episode is sponsored by Los Hermanos. I'm pretty sure you've seen the ad before the show got started, but shout out to the black man. D.C., Delaware, New Jersey, Georgia, New York. Make sure you holler at him, Los Hermanos. My guy, special guest in the building. Respectfully, man. That's the kid, million dollar key, man. What up, brother? How, How y'all doing? Man? What's going on? Ah, man, I'm good, man. You how know, you, how you feeling yeah. Sunday? Like, is it what, what mood you in today, man? Uh, shit, I'm kind of, you know, I'm getting my Sunday on, man. I'm kind of in the kickback vibe. I, you know, I ain't feeling too much in the rush to do nothing. Yeah, facts. Now, you, anyway, you watch, uh, you watch the, what were you talking about? The, um, the fight. Did you watch it? What's the nigga name? Adrian Brown and what's the other nigga? I don't even know the nigga name. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know the other dude name either. It was something Leslie. He got beat up by nobody. Uh, God something like that. Damn. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you watched was, the fight? Nah, I didn't see the fight. I just seen. He ain't missed nothing. That shit was I boring. I seen. Um, I don't know if it was Say Cheese that posted it or if it was him himself. I'm not sure if I follow him himself, so I don't know if I would. I don't know. Well, when he got knocked out. Yeah, so so that was crazy, you know. That was crazy to be uh the conversation beforehand, mm -hmm. and then how the fight went. Oh yeah, him talking about guns and shit. Like, yeah, well, bro, you know, we had a boxing match, man. I think that I think we should have known that he was gonna lose at that. Once moment. he started bringing pistols up, yeah, it's like, why you got to talk about guns and we fighting? Yeah, though? we put, I, we, put man, we you know we putting our hands up. Why we talking about uh, pistols, man? Yeah, usually you talk about guns when you feel like you about to get beat or something. I don't know, whatever. Shout out to the man. I, I do think it was dope that he lost all that weight and got back into fight mode. Oh, he yeah. lost weight? Hell yeah, he was fat as hell. He had the beer belly. He had the alcohol belly, like the cruddy. I don't know if you know how niggas be from Baltimore. Like the Baltimore niggas that get oh, money. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah, the yeah. belly, like you skinny yeah, with the slim belly. Slim up top with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's how he looked, man. But he lost mad weight. So shout out to the man for, for getting back sober, getting back in fight condition. Respectful. It's just, man, you got to show up better than that. Like, you got to get yeah, up. Yeah, you got to train. When it comes to fighting, man, or anything else, bro, like, you got to train when it comes to that type of shit. You got to yeah, you got you to put that work in, man, six, seven months ahead of time. That was disgusting, man. Who you got on um, the Mavericks in, in Boston? Oh, I don't even watch sports. You don't watch for real? Nah. Word up. Never did. I don't know why. I just never... Nah, I feel you. I ain't mad at it. Let's get into it, then, man. Tell people what you do, man. Introduce yourself, man. Let the, let the people know. So my name is Million Dollar Key. For those who don't know, uh, I'm an actor. I'm a writer. I'm a director, uh, producer. Uh, you know, I just dropped the film with Boosie. He gave me fifty thousand to do it. Um, 
I shot the movie in about seven days. Uh, I was given a 15 day shoot, by the way. We shot it in seven to eight days. Uh, shout out to Matthew Levine, uh, one of the cameramans. Jarvis Booz, another one of the cameramen. Um, when I say we shot that film in seven days, we had about two or three 24 hour straight shooting days. You know, so definitely shout out to the cast too. Um, they was they was definitely super hungry, super motivated, super dedicated, and uh, willing to go tooth and nail, you know, to get this project done for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So and for themselves too, but you know, like, uh, once we got that, you know, shot and situated, man, we dropped the film and I paid him his fifty thousand back. First three months, mm -hmm. uh, the film was out, so. You know, I'm a good investment, investors, respectfully. <laughs> Yo, let me ask you this, because last time we talked um, a while ago, we were talking about you stand with Boosie down in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, that was a great opportunity. Uh, just wondering, coming out of that situation, do you still feel the same way, or has anything changed? Same way as what? Uh, just what going into it, when you first started stand with Boosie. Because I remember you was like, it was really dope, it was a great opportunity, things like that. Yeah. Um, coming out of it. I feel like, it, I feel like, I can never really truly take away from that uh, piece of my life. I feel like I feel like living there. I learned a lot living there. I grew a lot living there. I, you know, I failed a lot too mm -hmm. at certain that. things. And when I say I failed a lot, I, I don't mean like um, I don't mean like at a goal or at a you know a uh, certain material thing, but just inside. Um, goals just mental goals i feel like i was failing a lot in certain situations like that and um you know sometimes you just gotta free space mm. free space clear space how I, was the experience what you expected going into it no no it was different um everything uh just things just ain't what you think they are you know, everything in what you think it is all the time. And um, I feel like as people, we need to pay more attention to that before we make uh, certain decisions. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be honest with you. You know, at heart, I'm a shark. At heart, uh, I'm a lion. So it's like, I, I'll, probably, I'll probably do it again. Mm. When you say that, though, it makes it seem like it was just a bunch of shit going wrong. Cause like when I think of like, cause it sounds like reflecting on it, the good came out of the lessons that you learned. That's what it sounds like. And I could be wrong, but it sounds like it was good because I learned so much from it. But if I'm thinking about it in that moment, that's not really good. That's bad. Yeah. So it depends on how you look at it. You know, perspective is a motherfucker. Um, and some people, eyes if i was to sit and explain you know they they might not want to do that hmm. what was it that, that you had a, to do uh, nothing specific that i had to do you know um just overall of the fight to getting what i was trying to get done hmm. it was a fight to get there it wasn't it wasn't you know just one two three like i mean and you know it's not supposed to like you said the what? You talking about getting the movie done or? Yeah, 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 getting the movie done, so to say, overall. So, like, nothing. So, ease is a greater threat to success than hardship, right? Mm -hmm. Um. With that being said, I feel like maybe if it was easy as I thought it was going to be or easy as I, you know, wanted it to be, maybe I wouldn't have learned the things I learned. Maybe I wouldn't have you know, had the mindset that I have now about things, you know? Now, when you say easy, I'm saying, I'm trying to understand which part are we talking about. Is it the getting the, mo the movie done? Because, like, from my perspective, okay, you were staying with Boosie, he gave you an opportunity to even stay with him. That's crazy yeah. right there. Yeah. So, like, yeah. At, at what point did it come, at what point did the movie get introduced from? It's like, okay, now I'm, I'm kicking it with Boosie, we stand together to, I'm about to do a movie with Boosie. Like, when did that when was that even okay? So I I was kind of bouncing back and forth too, back and forth to uh Baltimore. So when I I would go to Baltimore and then I would come back, but 
you know, most of the time I would go jump in other people's films. So this time I decided to write my own situation. I just wrote a, I wrote a, I wrote the film and then I picked the PowerPoints out the film. Free game right here too, respectfully. I I took I, I pulled the PowerPoints out the film and then that's how I made the trailer. See, a lot of people was telling me that like, oh, you know, you can't uh, you can't shoot the trailer without shooting the movie. You know, just kind of trying to shoot me down and in, in in other words and um I didn't believe it. I kind of stuck with what I believed in and I went and shot that goddamn trailer. I brought it back to him. I think I paid two hundred and fifty dollars for the trailer. I shot the trailer, brought it back to him. It was like a teaser type of situation. It was like two minutes long. I brought it to him. He watched it uh probably a minute in, forty five seconds in, something like that. He said hard. We kind of got to it like a few days after because I had left the house. I don't remember what the reason was, but I ended up leaving the house. Uh, I was at a hotel. I don't know where I was at. I was doing something. I left the house. I came back. He had called me. Um, I came back and, you know, he was like, you know, you, you ready to shoot. You, we going we gonna to do it. And it was kind of murder she wrote from there because shit. That was what my mind was set on anyway. Right. From the gate when I when I left to go shoot the trailer, when I came back on my way back to show you that that was already on my mind to shoot it. So was what was the hard the hardships, I guess, or even not even the hardships, the learning moments. What was the things that you was going through that you had to learn from per se per se? Um a lot of things that I had to give a lot uh uh the thing I had to give a lot of attention to, excuse me, was um, patience. Mm -hmm. um, never depend on nobody. You know, God say never put your, you know, your dependence in man or never put your, uh, I forget how the saying go, but it's a reason to that mm -hmm. because there's nobody that can come and save you. There's nobody that can make you a star. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody can make you you know, million dollar key. Can't nobody make you like this. You gotta, you gotta be this. Mm. And I just feel like, um, I feel like you can get lost depending on somebody to um, do something for you or depending on somebody to stick to a word or Depending on somebody to do what they told you, you you could you could get lost, okay. you know, waiting on, on man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn. Okay. So how would you describe y'all relationship coming out the situation? The movie is done. You paid them the money back. Like how would you describe where y'all at now? Oh, it's good. Mm. Hey, why? That's where it always been. That's fire. You think he's? Uh, do you think he was able to put you in like positions that? You never would have been in if you wasn't here. Um. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you got to think about it. It's like, had I never shot the movie, maybe Charlemagne wouldn't know my name. Mm -hmm. You know, and not that he remembers it. But my name has been said to Million Dollar Key has been said to Charlemagne. Mm. Or who else is on the Breakfast Club? Um DJ Envy. DJ Envy. That's Shout right. out to DJ Envy. Jess Hilarious is on the Breakfast Club? Mm -hmm. Oh my. Shout out to Jess Hilarious, respectfully. Yeah. So like my my name would have never been heard up there had I not shot that movie because it would be no real true reason for him to say my name there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So uh when I go to um, certain events and they ask, um, I was like, I was just at Greenlit. Shout out to Greenlit. Uh, it's a beautiful event. You should definitely bring yourself to. Um, it's for actors, directors, uh, just content creators overall. And um, I was at Greenlit and they was talking about, you know, who has made over 5000 in film, 10000 in film. Technically, I've made over $65,000 in film, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, again, I say that to say um, my audience, 
may not have bring uh bring me sixty five thousand mm. dollars. You understand? That may be a lot of his audience. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, that movie need to be done. Yeah. Respectfully. No, that's fire. That's fire, bro. I think it's um especially working with people like that, especially that we look up to. I think I said it before, like yeah. Boosie was like the godfather of our community. But as special as it can be, it also can be kind of like scary because like I don't know if you ever felt this way before, but it'd be sometimes I thought I heard something. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um my bad. I ain't know what the y'all heard that? I was tripping. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. So yeah, um well what I was saying, my bad. <laughs> as um as special as the moment it can be, it also can be like scary. And when I when I when I say that I say I don't know if you ever have felt this. Sometimes I don't be wanting to meet like my favorite celebrity or like somebody that I, I looked up to as a kid because they not they might not be the person that I always dreamt them to be. And that could kind of like mess you up for real. Like it's like picture you meeting, I don't know, Michael Jordan. And you want like, yo, let's take a picture. You're like, get the fuck out of here, little nigga. Yeah, <laughs> you were like, man, fuck him. You're never going to look at him the same. So, like, that's why, that's why I said I wonder, like, was it a moment like that after, like, all this is said and done? Did you still look at him the same as the Boosie that you've seen him before you even knew him? Um, I never, like, you know how you got an idol or a, mm -hmm. like a, you know, like somebody that I guess you kind of looked up to or whatever the case may be. Um, I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Even like as a kid, I don't. I didn't have one. No facts. So I can't say that you know that was my idol. Yeah, I'd be lying. And um, once I once I knew him as a person. No, I didn't see him, nothing like, you know, with the fame and the the red carpets see him as. Mm. I just see him as just my own boy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think he, you know, wants you hanging around him. Looking at him like that, yeah. No, nah, I, I mean your mind might not nah, might not be in a great place. No nah, facts. You know? No cap. No cap. Damn, I understand that. Yo, I um, it's funny we had. I we I'm gonna ask you this again. With all the experience that you had, mm -hmm. right, making this movie, kicking it with Boosie for the time that you kicked it with, and his crib. I'm just curious if you could go back, knowing all the information that you learned, all the the wisdom, the knowledge that you learned. Just from that experience, being with Boosie standing in his house, right? What's what would you choose if you, if if somebody came to you before before you even stayed there, before you dropped the movie, before everything, but you knew that you would learn what you know now? Like I would give you all this knowledge, all this wisdom, right? This movie, sixty five bands, all that. I would give you all this and knowledge, or you could take this two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash. Which one are you taking? Oh, immediately I'm gonna take the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash, Jay. I'm up. Listen, at heart, at heart, it's this thing burning in my soul to where as though I know I'm great. Mm. You understand? So like, when it come to a situation like that, I would be a crazy man to opt to owe somebody opposed to taking my own loss and diving into the situation by myself. Mm. You see what I'm saying? You yeah. see what I'm saying? So like I'm a star. I know I'm a star. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? If I was to say to myself, you know what? I'ma let that 250 rest and I'm gonna go do what I already. That wouldn't make logical sense to me. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? It so make some people sense pay for the knowledge, though. Like some people would say, "What I learned being in that house, being around Boosie for X, Y, and Z, is worth more than two fifty. See, it's like the five hundred thousand dollars or dinner with Jay Z thing. 
Yeah, even with that, I'm going to take the $500,000. Yeah. You know why? Because nine times out of ten, if I'm business mogul enough, if I'm business minded enough, if I'm if I'm business savvy enough, a conversation with Jay-Z is not going to make, shake, or break my life. It ain't going to do shit. I ain't going to It's lie. not going to do nothing for you. Jay-Z He's going to tell you. He said mean, it himself, man. Tell you, you don't take that $500,000. Oh, he said that? Nigga, yeah. He was uh, talking to Gail, I saying. think. Gail King. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> what I, <laughs> but you have people like Ray J. Ray J just did an interview with um with uh Shannon Sharp, and he doubled down on it. Shout he, out to Shannon Sharp. He was like, um, because he already got the money, he don't need the five hundred thousand dollars. I think Ray J be full of shit sometimes, but whatever. He said he nah, don't need the Ray five. J, Ray J got nah, some deals. No, nah, he do got man. some deals, but that don't mean he not full of shit. He said his glasses can't break, and Speedy broke the shit out of them glasses. But yeah, whatever. that was the funniest. So, so, so I'm just saying, <laughs> that like, was the funniest episode ever. Hey, that's why I said. I mean, shout out to Ray J too, but I'm just being real. So he be full of shit. So he said, um, he still would take the meeting because he has the money. So he's saying like the the opportunity that could come out or the business that could come out of that meeting is going to be worth way more than five hundred thousand. Yeah. So when you say it don't make logical sense, I mean to many it, it might not be, but if you know the opportunity that if you we only know you only know the conversation that you had with Boosie, you only know the relationship that you had with Boosie. So shit, who's to say is that worth more than two fifty? Because that alone could be worth more than two fifty. Yeah, so I'm saying that to say like for Ray J, if Ray J is already up, if he already got a bag, if he already got money, hey. It's a beautiful thing to to go and have a conversation with Jay Z because now you got something to bring to him. Nah, facts. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If I now an idea is a beautiful thing, don't get it twisted. You see what I'm saying? Talent is a beautiful thing, don't get it twisted. But that drive and that perseverance is 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 a different situation. So if you give me two fifty. The way I'm going to persevere when it comes to, you know, pursuing what I was trying to get done. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you, you know, nothing but beautiful things is coming from that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because I think about shit, there's somebody in the hood right now and they be like, if you give me 50, nothing but beautiful things want to come from that. Man, 25,000, man, I get a film shot and put on Tubi, respectfully. Mm. Twenty five thousand. A lot of people need a lot more than that. But what does that do to you for your career? Because there's so many people right now, like, bro, if I could just get a movie on Tubi, like, I'm, I'm up, I'm out, I'm out of here. Nah, I'm, 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 I'm in a lot of movies on Tubi, so it's not, it's not about. Um, so you know, like Meek Millie got a song called Levels, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So for real, like, it's it's levels to how you gotta go about things. So. If you independent, this go back to having money and not having money. I'm taking the 250 because I ain't got 250. I don't got a quarter ticket. So why wouldn't I go and take my own losses? I already got the knowledge. So why wouldn't I go and take my own losses and gain my own additional knowledge on top of what I already knew? Mm. Plus, I don't got to owe nobody nothing. No, fact. I lose. I lost. I win. I win. I don't got to cut. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like... As far as the, what would you do? Would you take the dinner or would you? Oh, I'm taking the money for sure. <laughs> I'm just asking you. I'm just trying to make it interesting. I just want to know what you was thinking. Oh, that shit. I thought that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to make it interesting. No, I'm taking the money for sure. Nigga. Like, I mean, it's only one way for me. But again, it depends. Like, If you got money, it's easy to say that because like, like I said, you got something to bring to the table. You even if you got a if you got if you got a quarter ticket, you could get some Raycons. I think that's what they Man, call it. You I could had... get some Raycons and, and bring them and say, oh hey, Rock Nation, all I need is this amount and we could go shoot it to this network and and shoot it to this uh uh, uh convenience store and whatever the case may be, right? You got bread to go and get all of that situated, so it's you doing 80% of the work. That's lie, what they want. Man. Fuck what Ray J saying because even if I had a couple M's, I'm still taking the 500,000. Like, fuck are you talking about? I'm never turning that down. Like, yeah, I feel like I feel like people, that question even came about because it's like you kind of looking for somebody to save you. Mm. And I'm telling you, for anybody that's out there, for anybody that's doing this, 
if you acting, if you rapping, if you singing, if whatever you doing, doing interviews, is nobody coming to save you, sir. Nobody. 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 You got to get it done yourself by yourself. You got to put the work in by yourself when nobody don't believe in, when nobody don't hear you, when nobody not cheering you on, when you got You might got to sleep outside for it. You never know. Whatever it takes, if it depends on how bad you want it, man. Mm. And God going to ask you that a lot of times while you on a journey. He going to ask you a lot. How bad you want it? Mm. Oh, you said you wanted to be a. Oh, but you ain't know. You ain't know. Uh, uh, Denzel had to sleep outside for 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 sixty five nights in a row to get that part when he tried to. Oh, oh, but you ain't know Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio had to had to you know go without food for days and days at a time when he was trying to. Yeah, man, it's gonna beat you to your knees. I promise you. Anything you trying to do and be successful in, but if you keep pushing, you are gonna get it. I promise that too. But right, well, I'm pretty sure you had to learn that along the way. So you didn't even think so when Boosie opportunity come. You don't think this is your savior? Like this is like this is it right here? Cause nah. I, no. Nah. Nah. Because you know it's, it's all, it'd be like your friends. Like you have this big interview. Like even now, like I'm pretty sure some of my friends, like man, you get that interview, like you out of here, bro. Like you, like what they say, the price go up. Like I never been like that. But in your mind, you know what? Like you said, nobody saved me. So like to be honest with this shit, I can interview Jay Z himself. It's still a possibility that that shit can flop. It, but but look though, even if it do, fifteen million views. Exactly, that don't really mean nothing. Now you may get other interviews, but that's not Jay Z saving you. That's yeah. you put the work in, and yeah. then you taking these interviews and putting the work. See what in, I'm saying? More work you know? No facts. That's a fact. Like the Breakfast Club. Like man, I've been trying to get on the uh, the Breakfast Club for so long, but again, it's levels to every situation. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So like he shouted me out on the Breakfast Club, but. What's it going to take for me to do to, you know, uh, 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 what level do I need to be on to actually get your own interview, you know, get my own interview on The Breakfast Club. So director, actor, which one you like better? If you had to choose one got to go. I'll probably do the actor. One got to go. Acting on. Oh. Well, I'll take the acting over the director. For real? Yeah, I love being on camera. Mm. Respectfully. That came after you direct? You, you was the actor first? Actor first. So you still would, t yeah. Actor first. I just knew that I could. Obviously, I was already acting, so I knew I could act in my own film. And then I felt like a me milking the game for so long of being on sets of you know star sets of BMF and Tyler Perry's studio sets and just watching milking the game. I feel like I could direct a movie too. It can't be that fucking complicated now. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like I like being on camera, but like it's something. About, it's something about like creating. Having a vision and bringing it to life, yeah. Like it's something about that. Yeah. Like even my merch, right? I was I went to go look at the, uh, and I'm pretty sure you probably can. Um, uh, yeah. Respectfully, shout out to the merch, Vin Allen. We got it coming soon, Vin Allen Vintage. You know, a brand that fits respectfully. Mm -hmm. Website I, to be up soon. I know you. As I'm saying, I know you can um, understand this, but I went back to look at my original, my original design for my shirts, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I drew, drew it out. Like it don't look nothing. It don't look no different, but it looks different. If that makes sense. Like the I, the concept is there, but if I, if you if I showed you what I drew out compared to what on the shirt, you're like what the hell? You know what I'm saying? It's the manufacturer. Yeah. So like I say that to say I love having a, a idea and bringing it to life. Like that's yeah. special. So yeah. even now I be I be like man, being on camera is dope, but creating something is fire yeah. too. So look though, so. I'm going to tell you the, the, the beautiful essence in that, right? So when you on camera, you create an art because all the writer can do and all the director can do, all the writer can do is write out what he wants to see mm. or what this what will look good for this character or whatever the case may be. The director can only tell you what he wants to see, right? Mm -hmm. But you as the actor, you have to paint the picture and make these people believe and understand, like, you know, this is this person. Okay. You got to make, you got to, you know, create that art. That makes From sense. From nothing to something. All right, hold on. Let me paper ask Paper to reality. All right, hold on. I got more questions. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you'd rather be an actor. Who's your top five actors of all time? My top five actors of all time. All time. I'm going to take Denzel, Will Smith. I'm going to take... Uh, Leon Le Leonardo DiCaprio. Are you just saying that because that's his his name is like, 
Or, nah, or, or, I'm saying that because he got me with Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. That's why I'm saying that. That shit was great. I'm going to say Matt Damon. Matt Damon got me with, might be weird, but he got me with The Martian um, in The Departed. Also, Leonardo DiCaprio in The Departed. Um, and my fifth one would be, believe it or not, Ice Cube. That sound weird. No Samuel but Jackson. But Cube is a... No, no. I, I, could, I could throw a Sam in there, but just, but this just my top, top my top faves. If I, okay. Just off my head. Yeah. I think, yo, you, you you know a movie I like from Leonardo DiCaprio that I don't think he should have won an a Oscar off this, but his only Oscar, as a matter of fact, was from, uh, what's the movie with the bear when he fought the bear and he killed the bear? The, the, uh, Un, um, the res the the resistance or something like that. The revenant. Re the, the the revenants. The revenants. Oh my god! You like that movie? Man, the movie was slow. It was super slow. It was slow as a motherfucker. It had a great concept to it because you know top to yeah, top yeah. to bottom it had yeah. a great concept to it. But when that nigga was fighting that bear, or I ain't gonna say fighting, but going through it with that bear. Yeah. Man, I don't know what they did with that editing or that. That camera, like I don't know what they did with that man, but so what I'm gonna say about that, and this this is gonna sound weird. I know they're gonna hate niggas gonna judge me for this. I felt like it felt too real, like that yeah. scene, like like usually like it's a movie, so I kind of expect some some fiction. That shit came back after you, it left them alone, and that shit came back it, again. I said, "Oh, these dudes." Like, Press. I don't think like it felt real. Like he was getting fucked up. Like it wasn't like like usually a movie you get some type of fiction. Like you know what I'm saying, like he like fucking the bit. Like you know what I'm saying, like it was just like and then look, and it was just long. that scene was long. It's like, bro, like it's no. <laughs> you see, they was trying to kill. It was like one nigga that was trying to like let him go or something like yeah. that. But the other nigga was like, "Nah, we gotta." You know what I mean? It's crazy how he still ended up shaking back. I think he couldn't talk or something like mm -hmm. that after a while. But he ended up shaking back and still coming, killing the nigga that. I don't think he should have, like, I ain't going to say it wasn't was Oscar movie. worthy, but I don't think, I'm not choosing a revenant over. No, 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 that wasn't an Oscar No, nah, it was the only one. Word? Google it. I think that was the only one because everybody was, it ain't make sense. Because I think um everybody thought he should have won an Oscar off of, uh, Wolf of Wall Street. He Wolf did of it. Wall Street was everybody that's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, like I think day. that's the only movie that he won an Oscar. And it's crazy because Leonardo DiCaprio got mad great movies. Uh, we could fact check it, but I, um, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. And also, I like them on. Word. I don't say I ain't gonna say Oscar worthy, huh? Yeah, that's the only one. I think. Um, what else? I I like this character on Django. I know that's probably debatable. Oh. But I like this character on Django. That shit was hard. You want me to tell you another joint that got me? What? Blood fucking diamond. <sighs> I, I think I watched it once, but I don't remember it. Man, top to bottom. That movie is a... Man, I say... I don't know what kind of... What that won or what kind of awards that... Man, Leonardo that DiCaprio? movie is the truth. Blood Diamond, wasn't a Leonardo big fan DiCaprio. Of like that. Like he's and cool. the other black dude. What's the, uh, the black dude name that playing there? I don't remember that movie. I probably watched it once. Man, you, you gotta go watch that. That that movie is something, man. All right, so something. I'm talking about. You could feel heartfelt. You could feel that movie, man. Yeah. I don't know. Did you, I, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, but shout out to him. So okay, give me top five actors. Top five movies because you are a director and actor. So give me top five movies. Top five movies. Mm -hmm. Top five movies. Top five movies. Top five movies. Um, paid in full. Okay. Um, yeah, that's definitely a a classic hit, respectfully. And um, if you see whenever whenever y'all go and watch Paid in Full, they in front of a store called Willie's Burgers. It got a red stop, a, a red top to it, like a red awning. Uh, that's my grandfather in real life. I'm gonna do his story soon too, respectfully. Um, Paid in Full. Mm -hmm. Um, paid in full 
Training Day, American Gangster, Pursuit of Happiness, and um, it's a Samuel Jackson joint. I can't get the name of it. It's not the negotiator, is it? The fucking negotiator. Mm, that's not bad. I feel like that was like super like for the exception of paid in full. They was all like it was no um diversity. Paid in full? You no, know I'm saying yeah, list. I feel like it was all the same. Yeah, that gives you an idea of what kind of movies I like. Yeah, I would go top five all time. And it's a mixture from fit, like how I feel, what I really feel, and just like just the movie itself. I'm definitely going for it. Well, Gump. Pursuit of Happiness is not the same of the other joint. It's not. It's not. You're right. I'm going Forrest Gump. I still never seen that. Yeah. So like again, that's not something I'm going like yeah, I really want like that's my favorite movie. It's not my favorite movie by a long shot, but I'm but just you saying know yeah all how hearts that like gotta be yeah because of the the playback value and how much you like you still to this day I watch it. And I learned something different right. to this day. It's like, what the? I watched it like five, six times. Right, I gotta go watch but that's not my favorite movie by, by a long shot. Um, I'm going to go. Mm. I want to say Bad Boys 2, but Bad Boys 1 was. Mm, mm, mm. That I'm, new Bad Boys? What you think about it? Ooh. I liked it. Okay. Let's well, get to it. Hold on. Hold on. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Mine. So I'm gonna say Bad Boys Two, uh, Forrest Gump. I'm going. I wish I could just say Denzel Washington. No, nah, Denzel got some shit because like Flight was fire. Flight was the yo. That's an underrated movie to me. How did that nigga run out alive? Bro, that's an underrated movie to me. Flight was insanely Man. good. But also, American Gangster was good. Equalizer. I mean, that's not even top five. But they're watching the movies to me. Like it was, it was cool, but it's not. Like you got think about it. You got the Book of Eli. You got <laughs> like you got like Denzel got shit. You feel me? Like what other actor you think could have played the Book of Eli? Will Smith could have played that. Uh, that's the only, and I don't think. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know who I think could have played it too? Who? It just fucking Elba could have played that bitch. Yeah. It just could have played that motherfucker. He nigga switched, swapped the voices up and shit. Yeah, get him right. It took us 20 years to figure out he was from Britain. I, yeah. That nigga acts like an American. It's a couple of dudes from up there, man. I ain't gonna hold you. Um. The dude from Snowfall. I built this shit. Damon, uh, the dude from Get Out. The dude from Get Out is from there too, right? Uh, like England or yeah. England. Yeah. yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know if I can do top five because, like I said, Yo. like some of my favorite movies is Denzel Washington movies. Like, remember, remember the Titans? That was my favorite movie. I don't think I ever seen that. You never seen Remember the Titans? I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> what? That shit. Coach Carter, the truth. That's nowhere near like Coach Carter. Oh, ten yeah? times better than Coach Carter. Ten times better. And Coach Carter, good. And that shit, ten, ten times. You know what's crazy? I look at the, I look at the title, and I, f I be feeling like it's about something different. And, and it, was, and it was based on a true, true story, I think. So it's like, and then like it's so like, I think um. Respectfully. <laughs> well, it's like I can name five Denzel Washington movies that's just better than everything. Like The Inside Man. Like it's so many good movies. Like. Inside man, training like, day, like so. I, I'm gonna try to do five. It's definitely not gonna be none of them black movies though, because they can't even touch the like. They don't have. It's unfair to put them up there because they don't have the budget to touch the movies. Yeah, those budgets. You know what I'm saying? Like, just crazy. being honest. Like, I like like Respectful I like yeah. Friday. I like uh, Paid in Full is good, but like, like yeah, Paid in Full is just one of them classics you can never like. Leave belly is good. The, you know who made paid him for um um Dame Dame Dash yeah like Dame Belly Dame was Dame good Dash. um Belly wasn't low budget now they gave him a couple million 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna I'm try to I'm gonna try to do this. All right. All right. Cool. I'm gonna do Bad Boys too. I'm going. Um, uh, I'm going Scarface. I'm going. Uh, Scarface, one of the ones. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going. Forrest Gump. I'm going. Mm, mm, mm. I need two more. It's a good selection so far. This is harder than I thought. So you gonna leave Denzel out completely? I don't know. What did I say? I I put Denzel in there, right? So far, I said Forrest Gump, Scarface. Uh. Um. Damn, man. Bad Boys 2. Uh bro, Denzel, bro, it's 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 just hard to choose, bro. Um, I guess I'm gonna go training day. Just because. Uh and then should I put a low budget movie in there? Yeah, I don't feel like the budget matter if you feel like it's top five. Maybe. Uh. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> I might go. Um. No, nah, I might. I, I'm. A, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with on uh, negotiator. I'm gonna go with that. negotiator. Pressure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's um. That's, that's uh. Samuel Jackson. So if you had to, so if you had to, I don't want to say kill, marry. What's another word for this? Like, kill somebody. Uh, no, yeah, I don't want to say that because that's kind of gay. Uh, what's another word to say this? Pause. It's we got three actors, right? One of them gotta go. Who would it be? Denzel Washington, Will Smith, Samuel Jackson. Who you got? Who got to go? Denzel Washington, Will Smith, and Sam. I would say. I would say Sam will have to go. And Sam, Sam, the truth. Yeah, it's just the die. All right, first and foremost. We're not even gonna argue about Denzel. We're not gonna do that. All right, no way. No one's gonna do that. We're not gonna. But do I know, that. no, because if you had to choose between Samuel, I mean Denzel Washington and Will Smith, who are you choosing? Denzel Washington. Okay, cool. That's easy for me. I yeah. think. So, uh, so uh, with, 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 when it, when I say Sam, I say that to say he got a beautiful catalog of diversity, but Will diversity is almost unmatched. I feel like Will Smith. That's a fact. But I feel like Will Smith diversity almost puts him. It's gonna sound crazy. I feel like Will Smith diversity is the reason I'm choosing Denzel over him because it's too diverse to the point where as though he spread himself thin sometimes. Like he got some movies that's just why would you do that? Like Denzel has no misses all the way back to the Bone Collector. No miss all the way back to what's the nigga Antoine Fisher like. I, it's no Antoine mystery. Fisher was another hit. That's it's another like, joint right there. Antoine Fisher. Like it's like he goes back to it's no misses. Like it's my time. Yeah, like it's no like Will Smith. I could count is a couple misses he got. Um, like I don't know. I feel like I feel like when it come to when it come to um exploring talent, right? Um. I feel like you got some people who kind of shoot on the arrow that they're um, called to shoot on. And you got some people who kind of tap into other situations, right? Because Will Smith got such a diverse catalog to where as though some of it you can't even appreciate them on it until he's gone. And I feel like that's going to be 
with a lot of the world. No, nah, I still want to be like, he shouldn't have made that shit. <laughs> like, the shit he did with his son, like, it's like... Whoa, After Earth? I, I don't even know the name. Yeah, maybe that. Cause what else he did with his son? That's probably it, yeah, because he did... Um, he did karate. I never seen Karate Kid. He I seen After karate. Earth though. That was that was a good movie. Maybe because I didn't watch, like I tried it. Like that shit just didn't. It didn't even make me want to watch it. It's like, bro. And then you got to think about it. Like I think didn't Will Smith play a gay man? Hey, hey. Like, yeah. Like Will Smith played a. Like like he got some movies where it's like, what the fuck hey. is you doing? Like, bro. Like he got movies like that. And even like I know this is gonna be a wild one. I don't care. No point intended. But uh, he could have kept the Wild Wild West too. What Wild Wild West? What Wild Wild West? Nigga, you don't know. He said you don't know what you don't know, man. The Wild Wild West? <laughs> you know, What's that? It's nah. The Will Smith movie. I ain't never seen that. Yeah. Yeah, Wild Wild West was one of, it wasn't one of his first ones, was it? That wasn't. Yeah, that was. Is that the name of the movie, Wild yeah. Wild West? Wild Wild West. Never seen that. And then they had a whole song, I'm going straight. To the Wild Wild West. Nah, nah. You don't remember none of that? I ain't know. You don't remember that song? Yeah. Yeah. It's talking about Baltimore, like Cisco was on that. Like, yeah. Um, he could have kept that for real. Uh Cisco from Baltimore? Huh? You said you said I'm talking about Baltimore. Cisco was on that thing. Or did you say that? No, yes, he's from Baltimore. You ain't know that? Cisco is from Baltimore. Man, I did not know that. I see how Wayne know we feeling. I did not know that. Drew Hill is from Baltimore. That's a place in Baltimore that got it that name from Drew Hill Avenue. Man, I did not know that. You really ain't no. Are you trolling right now? You trolling? You joking? Man, I swear to God, if I'm lying, I'm flying. You really ain't know Cisco's from Baltimore. I swear to God, I didn't know that. And you from Baltimore? And I'm from Baltimore. You ain't from Baltimore. Check bro. the birth certificate. You're I from swear like, to God, uh, University of Maryland. Yeah, that ain't really Baltimore. You got no nah, University of Maryland is actually Baltimore. It's like over west, right? No, nah, I don't know. It's a hospital. That's yeah, ain't that's over west? University of Maryland. You don't know don't where know you born at in Baltimore? Nah, you know I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm one of them, you know, I'm a Rolling Stone, baby. You know, I was, I'm New York. You know, this guy here is from New York, Far Rockaway, But you know, Queens. wait, what, what hospital you was born in? In Brooklyn. It's in Brooklyn. What hospital you was born in? Where is that? Where in New York? The Bronx. Where you, What hospital you was born in? Oh, you niggas is burnt the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, man, I don't, I don't know if Y'all niggas don't know what, like, that's the thing. Like, I, when you look, come to Atlanta, I know it's in know, Baltimore. You, I just don't know if it's west or east or, you But know. that's the thing. Like, you come to Atlanta, niggas, they, they be like, man, you ain't from Atlanta if you wasn't born in Grady. Like, that's the thing. But that's what I'm saying is, like, I spent 10 years in New York. I spent so 10 years in Baltimore. Baltimore man. I man. spent 10 years in both. Which one would you go with? Man, you a tourist, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm it's, it's up to you for you to say that. Johns Hopkins is over east. I'm not from over east. I grew up in McCullough Homes. Like, that's like that's just the thing. I ain't good. That's what I'm saying. I grew up in Far Rockaway, Queens, New York. It's the trenches out there, too. It's so a different type of situation. Jordan. That's not true, though, because I went back when I was about eight or nine. You see what I'm saying? So because I lived in New York for eight years and I was born in Baltimore, it's just however you want to cut it. But if you go look at my birth certificate, it's going to tell you that's where I'm from. University of Maryland, I think University of Maryland is like, I think that's over West, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not, I'm not really, because I think Mercy is downtown. Uh yeah, University of Maryland is like right by the projects. I think. If I'm, I don't. Yeah, but it ain't just that neither. Like even in New York, I can't tell you right now what train is gonna get you to the Long Island Ferry. I don't fucking remember. I moved around too much. <laughs> no, that makes sense. I lived in Pennsylvania. I done lived in D.C. I done lived in Delaware. I done moved around too much. I don't remember. <laughs> nigga, say I'm from the East Coast. <laughs> Rightfully, I'm from the East Coast. <laughs> That's what nigga bro, from. Where you from? Yes, everywhere. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Okay. So we talked about. All right. Hmm. Yeah. I'm definitely Denzel over. Like Den if Denzel was to go right now, I don't think he has no misses, ever. Like, let's look it up. <laughs> nah. Like, bro. Like, I'm just looking at it. Like, yeah, bro. Like, unstoppable. Dope. 
that was about the train, right? And it, it couldn't, what? Mm -hmm. Yo, you know what one, one of the best movies was? I don't think nobody was nah, in Nah, he don't got no misses. What I was the movie that uh, the bus couldn't stop speed? Oh, no, no, I'm just saying, just think about movies. That was a fire movie, bro. Speed? Yeah, you never seen that? You you know who uh who's a you know who's a great actor that that yeah, I'm surprised when you say name who that the nigga that played uh he had the he Nicholas Cage ah Nicholas Cage the truth remember the movie um with uh not even Face Off though the movie on a plane when they when they when they escaped they was uh, arrested and they end up like landing in Vegas Con Air I never fire. Seen that. I never you seen never that. seen Fire. Yo, you know what else movie was fire since we on movies? Oh, you know who we kind of we we named top five actors. Who did we name? We did that yeah. already, right? Yeah, we 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 fucking left out Johnny Depp. Yeah, respectfully, I'm not putting him on top five. Now nah, he could definitely go on. My, let me tell you. Let me tell you, Johnny Depp. <laughs> That's the nigga that played on the uh, the movie. With the Pirates crack? of the man, all oh, kinds of shit. That nigga diversity is crazy what too. Was the movie when they were selling crack. I don't know. Blow. That Boom. one, right? Oh, my God. That was the best one. That's a classic. Yeah, that was but like, look that though. like, Blow was fire. Let me, let me That's tell you. That's not fire. I mean, that, that dude. You see what I'm saying? That's fire. You not even think. It's like he playing roles that you like. Hold up. Now, that's you fire. Looking at the, the camera. You're like, oh, is that fucking Johnny Depp? That's fire. Playing Edward Scissorhands to Blow to the, to the uh, that dude Pirates of the Caribbean. Different. That's fire. That's man, I would that's love fire. to work with Johnny Depp. That's fire right there. Imagine writing a script with that dude. That's fire right there. That's fire right there. How old is he? Sixty one. Imagine writing a script with that dude. He'll probably executive produce some shit. Yeah. No. Nah, talk, man. Nah. He. Oh, uh, I think the um, Nicholas Cage one of them ones though, cause Con yeah. Air. But yo, I what I was gonna say, our, yo, so it's it's a couple movies because we talk about a dude the that played in um Jack Reacher. What's his name? Eh. Um, I know you're talking about. He cool. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. his name? He also um, played the uh, the green something right on the TV show. The green. I forgot his name, but whatever. Yo, you know it's one of the name. one of my favorite. Like, it's not low budget, but it was just like a. Yeah, yeah. Jack Rich. Tom motherfucking oh, Cruise. Yeah, no, nah, Tom Cruise. Yeah, man, that dude. The I think truth. I think because I'm about to go into that. Like some of the movies that got sequels, like. Um, Mission Impossible is probably one of the best franchises out. Action front, yeah. Well, I mean, one of I said one of because yeah, 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 one of them. 007 is really like that. My name is like Bob. 007 is like James Bond. It's insane, respectfully. But um, I was gonna say because I was gonna go to like movies that shouldn't have made sequels, and one I forgot the other day was I don't know if you ever seen Smoking Aces. Smoking Aces. Yeah, with Alicia Keys coming. They got they had a lot there. Uh They was uh, stealing? Yeah, they was rock yeah. I think I might have seen that. I don't really remember. I don't understand done. how they dropped the ball so bad. Like smoking aces was good. Like it was fire up to my to and my And then opinion. they did a number two and it flopped. It was probably one of the worst movies ever. If we if we talk about top five worst movies, smoking aces two gotta be in there. And, and I, I don't understand because smoking one. aces one was I don't remember the first one anyway. Yo, you gotta watch it. Smoke Aces was so fire for Smoke Aces 2 to be so bad, it ain't make no sense. Hmm. You know what else? One of the movies? I said it before. Coming to America. Coming to America. Coming Yo, to America was good. I never watched that. For number two to be so ass. I never watched number I know one. what I know what you did watch. How high? Oh, yeah. How high two was ass. You can't make another how high, man. How high, uh, how high is a classic that will have to be remade with uh What's another you, sequel they can't touched? remake it with them because they they older now. What's another sequel they should have touched? Them dudes do cause look kind of young still. Like they can still shake that shit, all, hit it again, Red makeup Man. and shit. It was who was it? Red Man, right? Red yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably Denzel still Washington that. still acting, nigga. If fucking yeah, Samuel Jackson still acting, nigga. Method Man and Red Man can still because they still acting. Like Method Man, Red Man was just in uh Ghost. Nah, but it take it take more than that. It take. It take it take from the. It what's really the, it really be about that bag when it when it come to. What's another sequel that shouldn't be touched that they did already that was just like ass. Um, I 
don't usually be into uh, sequels, to be honest with you. All right, what's a movie well, that? See. If that's fine, what's a movie that might not have a sequel that you wish you could redo? That's a good question. Um, that I wish I could redo. Or make a sequel to. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. That I could redo or make a sequel to. I'll tell you which one. And it's going to throw you off. Well, they already made... This was a remake. I didn't even know this. Did y'all ever watch... Um. Oh, Straw Dogs? Nah. What's that? I'm a movie watching nigga for me. Is, not it, to be is it Road Dogs? Straw Dogs. But it was a remake though. That was a that was one of the that was one of the better remakes. Cause it was uh originally a movie like in the nineteen somethings. And that was good. What are the ratings on that thing? The 2011 one. Cause some things I, I can't even I still can't think of one. It was good. It was a what? Damn, but them ratings be harsh, bro. But Straw Dog's good though. Hmm. Straw Dogs is good. I think Straw Dogs is good. Uh, what else? I cannot think of one. Can't think of none. Nope. Uh Damn. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Look at how hot two was ass, man. You should have kept that shit. What kind of movies you feel like? Or oh, I'ma say, movies I feel like should have had a number two. What? Was a movie called War Dogs. I don't think I've seen that. Oh, with um, with Jonah Hill and um, yes, that should have had a part two. Oh, it was based off of true story. Yep. To this day, I be thinking about it. I don't know how I'm they would that, swing Dogs? it or um, War Dogs. That's a man. That's a no. Good speaking movie. of like sequels, I think because we talked about this earlier, Bad Boys. You watched it already? Yeah. They did really well. Coming off of Bad Boys Three, mm -hmm. like because I, a lot of people had I like Bad Boys Three. I didn't. I thought it wasn't bad, but yeah. I feel like they turned it up a notch. Like they they I feel like they heard the, yeah ah yeah they did. I feel like they heard the cr critiques and turned it yeah. up and did they fucking thing. Shout yeah, out to fire. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. That shit was for sure. Yeah yeah I seen it. Nah, with the when they was like how how he shot one of the scenes. Nah. Yeah, he had like the camera like on on his machine. And it was like turn it towards him. And then it was like hard. That shit was fire. That shit was fire. That's how that action. That's how that action come about, man. When you got that. When you got that equipment like that, it's like, like you could do. You could do action with 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 a low budget. Um. With a low budget situation, but it's like, man, it's not gonna come out the way it's supposed to come out. Give some uh some some director some game. What's what's the most creative thing you think you had to do on set? To make uh, a, a shot. The most creative thing I had to do on set was um honestly I'm gonna say make one of the mothers believe that she was in the scene and I had to like um I'm gonna say we had to we had to put a black eye on her face and um a few other things, but but y'all really gave her a black eye? Nah, nah. I nah. said y'all niggas need to but go to jail. I'm gonna say this is creative because like I had to get her mind in a place to where as though like this this really happened because she never had done this before, so I had to get her mind in a place to where you know this really happened and like. The things I was saying to her was. So was, yeah, what about like with equipment though, like creative? I'm thinking, like, for example, you know how they have machines to like if you run in or something like you could slide the camera. I'm thinking about like maybe going to Walmart, hopping in a cart, and like having somebody roll you back while you're holding the camera, so it looked like one of them scenes. It looked like you got on one of them high quality machines, but you're really in the shop. Honestly, cart. man, like to be real with you, bro, like I was when it come to a situation like that, I would say using a jib. A jib is um, 
You do you know what a jib is? Nah. A jib is like a kind of like a crane for a camera. And it kind of brings the camera up high. You lock your camera onto it. It brings the camera up high and it it brings it down. Like but that's an actual camera. device. I'm saying how what was something that you had to if you nah, didn't you got to you got to control that but shit. But I'm saying if you didn't have a jib, right? Mm -hmm. Like have you ever had to like make something like that because you couldn't afford it? Like that's what I'm saying. Like I don't know. Instead of having that jib, that crane, I don't know. You might get like a motherfucking a long ass stick. I don't know. You had to probably cut it up, like and like put it inside. So I don't know. Like something that you had to really freak and get creative. Like yo, I don't know how the hell we did that. No, nah, I don't think I ran into no real problems like that. Okay. No, I don't I think I ran had into nothing bad like that on a podcast set. Because I'm not gonna lie, when it be like that. Sometimes, sometimes that could be a bad thing because you could be in a position to where as though not only can you not afford it, but you don't got nothing that look like it or can act like it either. But if you do, it's a beautiful no, thing. That, you so see what I'm saying? I was watching this YouTube video, right? Before like, but this is before uh, ring lights was a thing. This one guy, I think he, he, he cut like a circle in like a circle. I mean, he cut like a cardboard in a circle mm -hmm. and he put like holes in the circle and he put like... um. He 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 stuck like uh like you know the little lights that you just push, like yeah, if you uh yeah. so he 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 taped them all to the circle so it could look like a ring light. So when he was shooting, he would just like put it on a guest and it would it would make it bright. Illuminate. I'm like that was fire. Like yeah. I was wondering if you had to like really get crazy or something like that. Yeah, nah. See, like I had a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, I I wasn't really lacking equipment when it came to um. When it came to shooting, the only thing I was lacking when it came to shooting was uh, knowledge. Mm. I feel like um, even on my film, man, I feel like I feel like it was knowledge that was being withheld that could have been said, or you know, if you already shot a movie or whatever the case may be. I feel, feel like, like it a lot was, of the niggas that was helping you with the movie was really holding back. Nah, you know, sometimes, sometimes a nigga will shake your hand and stick a knife in your lung. You know what I'm saying? Damn. I, yeah. Not your back? He yeah, alone? Saying, yeah, exactly. He wants you out of here. The worst part. <laughs> God. The worst part. He's so such a lung. I'm saying that to say, like, I don't know, hypothetically, you might be filming my movie, but you may not have my best interest at heart, truly. Or you may just not really care. Even if you you're paying them? Even if you're paying them, Jay. Oh, that's Most crazy. people only really care about the money. Can you... How many... Bro, how many genuine people genuinely want to see you win that you could really think about in your mind? But I'm thinking if I'm paying you, you don't got to be genuine. That's what the money for. Are you don't have nah, to nah, nah, nah. I'm going to tell you why it's still genuinely in there. Because it's like you paid me to shoot your movie. I shot your movie. You didn't pay me to give you extra knowledge. and Yeah, no, I mean, that's true. Yeah, I get That's that. common courtesy. But that that's that's having me in the neck, though. Oh, it is. Now, if you... Because if, if you, you, if you, if you shooting a video. shot a certain way, knowing that I should be shooting it this way, but I just, you know, this is what I know, so this is what I'm saying. Regardless if I'm asking you... All right, let's put it like this. Let's cut this. Let's put it like this. If you shooting a still shot, right? You shot it, boom. But, you know, to... The audience that might look bland, it might look like nothing is happening or going on or whatever the case may be. But the cameraman might have equipment and he know that that same still shot could be 10 times better if I just put it, if I put it on a, a slaughter shot. But that slaughter shot might cost more money. It don't cost more money. You already got the slaughter in your van. You just got to set it up. Mm. You follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you holding the knowledge back from me is making my shot not look as good as it could have looked mm -hmm. if you would have been genuine enough to give me that knowledge. What's that nigga name so we don't work with his ass no more? Oh, no, nah, we ain't going to say no names. I'm just, um, you know, I'm we ain't going to say no I names. I got my interview. I got to ask the question. <laughs> so is these the type of niggas when you say niggas be gatekeeping? Is these the niggas that you think be gatekeeping? Yeah, it's a, it's a you know, everybody, in my personal opinion, man, I feel like everybody has their own little situation of gatekeeping that they could be doing. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, like, if if my man is looking, my man do security. Mm -hmm. You do security, right? If I know you looking to better yourself doing security, in my eyes, this is my opinion, it ain't going to cost me a dime 
to introduce you to somebody else who might want you to do security for them. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So all in all, like, I don't gotta I don't gotta pay nothing for that. No, you don't. I don't gotta lose for that. So what would be the problem in that? So this is small as security. I'm just not letting you come and be around uh maybe I'll be around famous people. So I'm just not letting you come around and be around these famous people because I know you a shark too, low key. And I know you're going to work your move if you're in the room. And you're going to try to work with these people too. But I'm gatekeeping if I, you know, hold that in and not say nothing. That It, it ain't going to cost me nothing. So why wouldn't I tell this dude, yeah, man, go ahead and yeah, come with me. Uh... Jay-Z might want you to do security for him. Yeah. No, I mean, I understand. I also, I think another perspective is that a lot of times... Gatekeeping is withholding information that you know can help somebody that won't cost you a fucking thing. No, that's a fact. To keep it clear for anybody mm -hmm. that don't understand. That's gatekeeping. Yeah. Holding information. Well, now, so I'm not talking about the holding information. I'm saying not getting an invite. Sometimes everybody can't go, and sometimes it looks like a nigga got it figured out, and whole time he trying to get his own foot in the door, but it looks like he in the door. For example, like, because I'm... I'm just like this. Like, any event that I'm going to, I'm yeah. inviting my mans. However, yeah. I know sometimes I kind of fuck myself up because, like, well, I'm not going to say I fuck myself up because I don't give a fuck about these niggas, but sometimes I can do myself a disservice because I'm trying to bring somebody else along and whole time I'm a plus one to a plus one. So now I just made it all, all complicated. So what happens is on the outside, it might look like, it might look like I'm going to this event by myself whole time, bro, the nigga that invited me shouldn't even invited me. You get what I'm trying to say? So how am I invite somebody else? So it could look like that. And a lot of times you might look at somebody think they got to figure it out. Whole time they still trying to get their foot in the door. So it could look like gatekeeping, right? But mm -hmm. all in all, it might not be. You just never know. I'm not saying that don't, that don't exist. Because it do be niggas out there who be withholding information. Like, use a hoe. Yeah, nah. Like, so in a, my, hoe, a lot of my situations, it ain't, it ain't that. But like, all right, so like, I will agree to that in some cases. In some cases as, but that's just somebody just not being real with they self and where they at in life. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because if they know that, if I know I wasn't supposed to bring you to Raw's house with me, there's, there's no reason in, in the world that I would bring you. I'm not bringing you because I know that nine times out of ten I should be going here by myself. When I can bring you, I know when I can bring you. No cap. It's real, not that time yet. Real life story. You can ask my man's. I got an invite to Ross' pool party, right? I probably shouldn't even say this on public, whatever. Got an invite to his pool party. It was a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I had like one in invite because it was like a, a cameraman or something I supposed to brought with me. Boy, I sent that to like five of my friends. We all finessed our way in that It was so bad to the, the, the girl, the person that was in charge, emailed me like, hey, did you da-da-da? I'm lying like, nah. But that's just who I am. Like, I'm a nigga that come from the city, so it's like, we, if I'm going, we all going. And if we all can't go, fuck them niggas. But I'm not, I had to learn that everybody is not okay. No, everybody is not like that. And just because somebody is not like that don't mean that they're a hater. I had to learn that, like, just because yeah. somebody isn't like you. But you know when that's like that. You see what I'm saying? You know when your man trying to get somewhere and he, and he ain't even, yeah, a, yeah, you, you know, you know yeah, yeah, you're yeah, close yeah. enough to these people you, to know these things. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't no no half-stepping with I that type of situation. That because we meet new people all the time. But, but these ain't new people I'm talking about. Okay, see, I'm talking about, like, I never forget in college, right? I got all these fucking stories done my old head. In college, my man, like, his man had a birthday party. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, I can't go? He like, bro, it ain't my crib. Like, what, nigga? I'm your man. Like, where I'm from, like, you and, you and, like, whoever you bring is on you. So I know I'm not bringing Always. no fuck niggas because if he fuck up, it's on me. That's where I'm from, right? But I had to learn in college, like, it's like, bro, like, nah, bro, like, I'm not about to invite nobody else to somebody else's house, right? I got to get their permission first. Like, yeah. me, and then it's like certain friends for certain things. Yeah. And I never forget when he told me that, it threw me off. Yeah. I'm like certain friends for certain what type of like me I'm like no one friend all friend. You want me to keep it real with you though? 
it's a lot of situations like that. But to be honest with you, like, in my life, my circle is not really, like, huge. Mm. You follow me? So when I bring somebody, I know none of these three niggas that's sitting in this room going to say nothing out of line. I don't care what they know. Mm. None of these niggas going to say nothing out of line. None of them. None of them is going to act out of line. They all are professional when they need to Diverse, all of them. That's who I like to surround myself with. You see what I'm saying? So when I do bring you along, I'm not even worried about you. You understand uh, uh, doing or, or saying or acting the wrong way because I already took that test on you before you. You see what I'm saying? That's what you, This has to be like this in order to be around me. So you think your your friends were the one, well old friends were the ones that was gatekeeping? Um, not necessarily friends per se, just people in the business. And not that you, you don't owe me shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't just, you cameraman, whoever, investors, you don't owe me a fucking thing. So I understand that. But at the same time, you know, because that term exists, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. If you holding back information that won't cost you a goddamn red cent, that'll elevate uh, the next person. I feel like, what's wrong with paying it forward? I live my life on paying it forward. Facts, no, no cap. You see what I'm saying? Just genuinely, you know, <clears throat> man, I, I just, I feel like that's a beautiful thing. And like, I went to help this girl, right? Or I went to help a friend of mine, I'm gonna say. I ain't gonna call her this girl, that was crazy. But I went to help a friend of mine, right? Um, Genuinely going to help. Genuinely, you know, Something I didn't really, I might not have wanted to do. Or I might not have been getting paid for. Whatever the case may be, right? Mm -hmm. It's hot, sweaty, you know, the whole nine. I'm genuinely on my way to helping. And then I get a call from, uh, it's a meeting call uh, with like some writers. I ain't going to say their names. Uh, my manager and some other people, but the film that I was doing, instead of doing the film itself, now they're going to turn it into a series. Mm. This is me genuinely going to pay it forward for for my friend, grandmother, her people's, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm just genuinely going to, you know, do whatever I got to do because, you know, I know how to do um, <clears throat> a lot of home improvement uh things. So I'm just genuinely going to pay it forward, and I feel like, me not looking for nothing back or expecting nothing back, I feel like I I got a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like paying it forward is a, a beautiful thing and, and really should be a big part of life. No, facts. No, you right, bro. Yeah. Our shit was good. We actually talked about it was a good time, man. Yeah, man. For the people that don't know what you got coming up, you told us you, you had the movie, but what's next? So next is, like I said, uh, it was supposed to be a... Part two? No, no, no. I'm doing a part two. I'm getting that written right now. Okay. Uh, so it was supposed to be a, you know, just a sixty minute film or a, a, a hour and an hour and a half film, as far as uh the coincidence. But now it's a series. Okay. So I have a series coming, and shout out to my team. I got a lot of love for them. Cal Reese, uh, Sean, Lajill. Uh, Ashley, my manager, just shout out to the uh, those guys for sure because um, I just feel like they introduced me to some beautiful things and some beautiful people and it didn't cost them a goddamn red cent. Mm -hmm. And it could also elevate me in ways that, you know, they would never even know. But because they are, uh, you know, genuine souls, it's like it doesn't matter where you go. Mm -hmm. I genuinely was paying it forward for you to elevate, for the next person to elevate. If that if if I can't fit in that door, maybe you could fit in that door. You know. But today we got so many people that's like, if I can't fit in that door, I don't want nobody right. to get it. I'ma lock the keys and throw them in the ocean. Facts. And I just feel like, you know, that's you're a grimy person when you when you thinking like that secretively about things, you know. Niggas just be scared, bro. Niggas be scared that their spot gonna get taken. And they don't have no confidence. I think it's yeah. from that. So, 
it really doesn't matter uh who's scared, who's not scared. It don't matter. It's like a it's like a UFC fight. You know like how a UFC fight, like how they go into the fight and they both look like they about to It don't matter if you scared or not. Somebody's getting their fucking teeth knocked out. Period. In the discussion. Somebody gonna hit this mat. In the discussion. Same thing with me. I'm gonna be a fucking superstar. In the discussion. It doesn't matter who try to get in my way. It doesn't matter who trying to stop it. Because you can't. It's, it's, you know, it's not, not a possible thing for you to do that. Only I can stop me. That's, that's really just how that go, Jay. Only you can stop you. Yeah. The next man can't stop me from, from being a superstar. It's already set and written in stone. I'm already a star now. You know? Yeah, that, and, uh, that, that escalated quickly. Yeah, respectfully, man. Knocking his teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just the facts of it, though. When you like, like, like the Adrian Broner fight and the other dude. Yeah. Somebody's gonna lose when we leave here tonight. We could talk as much shit as we as we want to talk, but at the end of the day, let's keep it gangster. Somebody's going to lose. There will be a loser at the end of this match. Like it, love it, hate it. It will be a loser. Respectfully, man. Now, I just feel like when you got the heart of a lion. And you got that um, that perseverance and that and that and that drive in your soul like that. I just feel like can nobody stop you from being a superstar, man? It's 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 written and set in stone already. They could they could they could you know hold any kind of information they want to hold back, but that ain't gonna that ain't gonna do nothing. No. The devil worked, but God is the greatest. Whew. No cap. For the people that don't know, let them know how to follow you and everything, man. Let's get out of here. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Let's do it. So uh, if you don't know. I'm Million Dollar Key. You can find me on Instagram at Million Dollar Key. Million, D-O-L-L-A-K-E-I-I. Million, D-O-L-L-A-K-E-I-I. BoosieMovie.com for that no honor, loyalty, or love. is only $14.99. Go check me out. Yeah. This is good, man. What y'all don't know is we did this like a couple times, but Ooh. this is worth it. This is good. Respectfully. This is good. J-Hill, yeah. J-Hill Podcast, Million Dollar Key. He's a rap. We out.